um, been indeed uh, involved in press, uh, in fact, since uh, it started in 2010. Uh, but chairing our last year, we have a process where we are vice chair, then chair, then past chair. So this year I am past chair of uh, the Prey Scientific uh, Steering Committee. So I would like to just reminding a few of the numbers showing uh, how much uh, PACE has been uh, used in the past uh, six years. So PACE was launched in 2010. There has been about more than uh, 400 uh, projects that have been uh, uh, funded, supported. Uh, numbers like uh, 10 billion uh, core hours, so 10,000 uh, million core hours awarded. Um, people trained um, about 24 petaflops in total. Their funding of 500 uh, million euro over the, the, the period, and uh, a large number of hosting members. So those are some facts. And uh, I would like to emphasize uh, more about the, the use of place and illustrate uh, my. My idea is to, to show you uh, how important it is for us to have a place and how diverse uh, the different use, uh, usage uh, are. So, on, uh, we have as um, the Scientific Steering Committee of Praise a role of advising uh, the Council. So, we advise on the needs, on the overall process of uh, the allocation, and also we evaluate the final reports of the project. So, we have a view of uh, how praise has been used. And last year, we had a, a, a strong uh, um, say or a key message that we wanted to send to the, to the Council that we find that praise one has been really very successful. It has been uh, uh, very important to establish a European HPC uh, community and it has strengthened science and competitiveness. So using for that all the work that has been done and the evaluation of the final report. Uh, you have on uh, the right here the different fields. So all the fields are concerned. You go from biochemistry, bioinformatics, life sciences, chemical sciences and materials, earth system sciences, engineering and energy, fundamental physics, math and computer sciences, universe sciences, so which gives you the overall view of how diverse the different fields uh, are. And it, indeed, uh, a place is quite important and has a strong impact on different aspects of the knowledge. First, the basic knowledge, the scientific knowledge. We need a, there are still a lot of things to understand in astronomy, in particle physics, for which the computing is extremely important and really essential. There are also all the societal challenges. Computing is key for societal challenges like uh, climate. I am myself a climate scientist, so a bit more at ease to explain to you uh, how we use it in that field. And, uh, uh, but I, I will try to show you all the fields that mine. It's also important for health. It's also important for a lot of uh, fields where more driven by applications in different engineering or uh, taken as a large, uh, large meaning, like uh, combustion for aeronautics, but also materials, like uh, uh, for life sciences, uh, uh, drug and new applications of uh, medicine. So it's really key for a lot of uh, fields. So I wanted to illustrate a few examples, it's certainly just uh, a few of them, I have taken four, uh, trying to show the diversity of those uh, different um, usage. I start by basic knowledge because I think it's always important to remind that each time that this computing is key for scientific knowledge and that we should not, even if innovation and application and societal challenges are key, scientific understanding is, is very important and drives the knowledge of tomorrow. So we need to still have a lot of uh, uh, better understanding of how the overall uh, world and universe uh, work. So taking the example of the sun, there has been uh, simulations done by a project by Mats uh, Carlsson from uh, Norway with uh, 34 uh, million co-hours and uh, uh, trying to explain the uh, heating of what we call the corona. So you have the, uh, this is part of the sun, you have the surface of the sun that it meets at a temperature of 6,000 Kelvin, which gives us the, the visible uh, spectrum of uh, the light. But 
uh, if you look at the layers above, the corona, which is not the first one, is chromosphere, then you have the corona, can reach up to a million Kelvin. So how do you go from 6,000 to a million Kelvin? There is a need to have a process to warm uh, this uh, upper atmosphere of, uh, of the sun. So we, they did a simulation, and for uh, the first time, they really uh, could do it at a very high resolution. Uh, it is only part of the sun, because it's absolutely, completely impossible to simulate all the, the sun. And they investigate the role of the convection which is inside the sun, the role of magnetic fields, and how the fact that you have uh, gas parcels that are ejected uh, from uh, the sun can manage to heat the, the corona. So what was new is that they could do it as a much higher resolution as uh, usually done. Here you have different uh, resolution uh, for the convection, how the convection uh, looks like at the surface of the sun for 48 kilometers, 24, 12, 3 kilometers. And the fact that you go at much higher resolution shows very much finer structures, more turbulence and modifies the way both the bubbles and this exchange of heat is done from the surface up to the corona. And at higher resolution you have in here you have uh, its uh, upscale motion in grey and downscale motion in uh, white and you can see that the structure is much more complex and it modifies the results. This allows a better understanding, but it also allowed to uh, do some synergy with observations because the results were used to de design a new satellite that will be launched uh, uh, soon. It is also, it has, even if it is scientific, uh, basic scientific understanding of uh, the sun, it also has some possible applications for what is called the space weather, which is the fact that it controls, this system controls what happens about the solar wind that perturbs uh, the, uh, atom, the Earth's uh, magnetosphere and uh, the arrival of particles and uh, our uh, teleconnections. So that's one type of example. Another type of example is uh, uh, taken from uh, climate. On uh, climate prediction, there is viability in the system and last November we have what we call uh, an El Nino phenomenon. What happens during those El Niño is that there is an anomalous warm waters in the Pacific. You may say it's not very critical, it happens somewhere in the Pacific, it's not uh, our business. But the problem is that when this occurs, it perturbs all the rains, precipitations in the tropics, it perturbs the climate of North America, not too much in Europe, but it perturbs a great part of uh, the climate uh, of uh, the Earth. So it's quite important to be able to predict it. And uh, what the uh, group of uh, Francesco de Blas Hayas at BSC in Spain uh, did with 50 million co-hours is that they could investigate as, again, higher resolution. So you see at each time that's something that comes regularly here. The, the fact that having more computing allows more resolution. They studied an ensemble of simulations uh, with different uh, climate models, uh, so collaboration in Europe, uh, uh, showing the impact of uh, resolution. So here is the difference of uh, sea surface temperature, so the temperature of the sea, higher resolution versus the standard resolution, showing that you better capture the, the warm waters of the Pacific, and if you compare with observations uh, during the different uh, uh, months, in blue high resolution, in uh, black standard resolution, for two sets of observations, they could show that at each time higher resolution improves the prediction. Probably not as much as they were expected, but it shows the impact of um, resolution, and that's something that is uh, quite uh, uh, key and more and more on uh, uh, seen as a, an important challenge to go towards much higher resolution for, for climate. Another uh, example on, uh, taken from uh, cell biology. In uh, cell uh, biology, um, one of the issues is to understand uh, the different uh, uh, cell membrane, uh, how the membranes uh, uh, react. And uh, so they simulate a membrane like uh, this one with different uh, proteins and lipids. And they want to understand how much those lipids and proteins 
uh, interact with the, the form, uh, the shape of the mountain. And uh, so this is important to understand uh, these uh, different membrane proteins because they play a key role in uh, uh, the high ion uh, channel, in uh, drug receptors, or in uh, to transport some uh, elements. So they could uh, do that was done in UK, University of Oxford, by Mark Samson and Heidi Corso uh, with uh, 13 million core hours on Curie, and they could simulate the impact of those lipids and proteins, showing, for example, that when you have different types of uh, lipids, they tend to gather. They really are a driving force of the curvature. But then this curvature of the membranes plays a role in the interactions of different elements. Here you have, in fact, an influenza virus that interacts with the membrane in, uh, uh, in uh, this uh, region of curvature. And so this is used to better understand how their viruses can live without, uh, survive outside their host and not just, uh, and so uh, helping to have the disease uh, spread uh, more widely and uh, enhancing the transmission. So, uh, once again, understanding, but also uh, uh, this uh, issue of uh, um, understand, uh, understanding some societal challenge and better understand, preparing for, for, for drugs and understanding the mechanisms. Uh, one important aspect, and this is shown by this figure, is that it's nearly, for the first time, they nearly had, with those large simulations, uh, practically, uh, they could sh sh uh, simulate an in vivo system. So it was practically as if they, they were uh, doing some in vivo uh, experiments. Another example is uh, with combustion. So we are then in aeronautics, so more for uh, innovation on uh, the ignition process. On uh, one important aspect in, uh, for gas turbines is to understand how the ignition uh, propagates. And one of the issues is that they would like to have cleaner combustion. But cleaner combustion uh, is uh, done by injecting more air. But if you inject more air, you have more instability of these, uh, of these flames. So uh, they want they use the simulations to better understand how uh, this works. And uh, you have uh, the, here uh, 16 uh, injectors, which are typically uh, an helicopter uh, uh, engine. Uh, and uh, they, um, you have the start of the combustion, and then it separates in two fronts, which propagate and then tend to merge. This is done by simulation, with a large AD simulation, and this is shown from the experiments. So it's quite impressive to see how much they can, uh, thanks to the simulation of the uh, uh, large AD simulation, they can uh, reproduce uh, the uh, observations and better understand uh, this uh, role of uh, combustion. This was done in France by Mathieu Boileau with uh, 15 million uh, commands. So those are just uh, four examples. Uh, there are, there were, I remind you, 400 uh, uh, projects for praise. So just to give a flavor of how diverse and uh, how really they are crucial to help understand uh, elements. Uh, even if the as, uh, as uh, SSC has no, does not follow what uh, is done with regard to SME, but uh, I think it's important also to emphasize that uh, those simulations are also used, this capacity is also used by SMEs within what is called the SHAPE program, HPC adoption program in Europe, and the next goal is going to be open tomorrow, and uh, showing also breakthrough in uh, applications and more uh, R&D, uh, but uh, more tightly with applications like uh, in uh, Renault, so with CAR, uh, testing uh, uh, new uh, numerical methods, and they uh, mentioned that uh, it allowed them to have a five year in advance uh, rather than if they had done it uh, just by their own um, uh, facilities. And uh, with 42 million hours on Curie, they could address. Uh, Optimize much more, much more many uh, parameters and uh, investigate security uh, roles, uh, crash of uh, the car. It, it is also been done for new drugs by Sanofi and uh, uh, 11 million co-hours on Fermi and uh, so in Italy, and to improve the process of drug discovery. 
Another example is how ships interact with the sea and as well the, uh, that aqua planning here, the, the tire with the aqua planning and how it reacts, or a ship interacting uh, with a uh, uh, wave. So um, this shows you also some examples that it is uh, also important for uh, more directly linked uh, with the applications. So it's clear that uh, it's uh, crucial that uh, we continue to have access to, uh, in Europe to uh, high-end uh, uh, computing facilities. The SSC has uh, strongly recommended uh, to the uh, Press Council that Press 2 must, uh, we must have a Press 2, a second phase of Press. We need to continue to provide access to world-class HPC facilities in Europe, at least at the, same, at the level of PRIS 1, not with the same level, but at the same pace, I mean the same relative role compared to the, the national. So this is essential to progress on science and innovation. I've shown you examples where it allows to have uh, uh, larger size domains or more resolution, uh, more complex physical, chemical and biological systems. It also allows to gain experience on the new types of machines that we can then arrive at the national level. So it's important to have an ecosystem and not just one type of uh, level. So uh, European is really a key for IAM experiments to have much larger allocation than at a national level. So it's important that there is a really uh, a difference between the European and the national. But the national is also key because the IAM experiments do not cover all the needs. There are also needs to deal with the smaller problems, to have more production of runs, to a large number of uh, simulation study of a uh, number of parameters, to have new developments. It cannot just be achieved by world class. So there's really this issue of this idea of pyramid is, we think, really uh, crucial to be kept in mind and to uh, really uh, be afforded it in uh, Europe. There is, uh, uh, if we compare to the international competition, uh, so uh, to have access to those facilities is uh, really uh, uh, key uh, since, for example, if we look at Insight, there are projects of several hundreds of millions of core hours and this is something we need to be able to uh, be uh, able to do. The preparation of codes, even for the, the architectures which are today are an important part and need to be accompanied and it will be even worse in uh, or uh, more needed in the future with the future um, architectures which are promised to be more and more uh, complex uh, hybrid and uh, which will require much more uh, closer interactions between manufacturers and uh, code um, designers. So, uh, we think it's important to have a range of architectures and the model of PACE allowing to have uh, different uh, uh, architectures is important, at least uh, two very different types of architectures, like uh, some uh, can manage uh, with independent, simulating independent processes or independent particles, so they have weak communications, limited memory per node and manage with those systems, whereas some other fields like fluid dynamics or climate, we are in this, this category, we need a higher level of communication and much more uh, memory per node. Uh, there is also the need to take care, it was mentioned by uh, Gustav, the need to have uh, storage capacity because indeed as the, the size of the problems grow, the size of the, uh, the data produced uh, uh, grow and uh, uh, climate, we are particularly uh, uh, one of the sector that is uh, uh, quite pushing on, on this because we will we produce a large amount of, of data, typically uh, about um, uh, the, the largest project in praise uh, was done uh, on, for climate, this was the upscale project, 140 million uh, core hours and they produced 500 terabytes of data in one year, so more than one terabyte of data each year uh, to manage. So, we also see that there are some emerging needs, not yet really using uh, high performance computing, but that may come uh, more and more, uh, like in astronomy with very large volumes of data, which will require just to deal with the data, high performance computing. But the, we have just touched a little bit on that because there was an expression of interest on, uh, on data, but it's still, it's more an emerging need, but this is 
something that may have to be uh, considered more in the future. So I thank you. We really uh, uh, hope that press 2 uh, will start uh, soon and uh, uh, we are, uh, it's very important that there is a strong support of the Commission that uh, we need high performance, very high performance computing and world class facilities in Europe. Otherwise we are going to uh, lose uh, on the European competitiveness uh, for, for science. Thank you.